Um, so now I'd like to welcome to the stage Kate Darling from the MIT Media Lab. Our prompt for these lightning talks today was, what is the key issue that we should be focusing our collective attention on right now? And I think that this community has done a really good job of voicing some of those issues. So I do want to use my five minutes to just throw something in that I don't think is a major problem, but I think is maybe an additional challenge that we are facing in AI governance. And that is the challenge of public perception. So as you all know, there is an incredible amount of hype right now in the AI space. And you can tell that there is because people in even tangentially related fields have all changed their Twitter bios to have the word AI in them. The, the media is all over it. I mean, everyone wants to talk about AI right now. And that's really great. It's really great that it's getting so much public attention. But, you know, compared to other technologies like, say, cryptocurrencies, I think that people, you know, with cryptocurrency, people have a hard time wrapping their mind around you know, what this actually is. But with AI, we don't have that problem. We all know how to imagine AI because we've had this concept for a long time, and we've had it in particular in science fiction and pop culture, right? These supercomputers that get really smart and that have human characteristics and that might become self-aware at some point. And it's not that people are stupid and don't know that that is not you know, complete accurate depiction of what's going on today. But I think it's really unhelpful for all of us that we have this cartoonish image in the background of all of our conversations about AI. And in some ways it's worse than not understanding the technology at all. Because I really get the sense that people tend to overestimate or even underestimate the capabilities of current AI based on their sci-fi understanding of it. And uh, this you know, this fear or fascination with creating human level intelligence is I think as Kate and others have pointed out, really distracting us from some of the issues that we need to be focusing on right now. And some of the uh, experts in the field are not actually helping with this. So this is an actual quote from a well-known AI scientist who's not here today. Uh, describing to the public how DeepMind's DQN system learned to play Atari video games. It was like a newborn baby opening its eyes for the first time. And then he says, so if your baby did that, woke up the first day in the hospital, and by the end of the day it was beating all the doctors at Atari video games, you'd be pretty terrified. That's not helpful. <laughs> Okay, people are already weird enough about how we perceive these systems. You don't need to encourage the anthropomorphism even further. We are suckers for ascribing life to these machines. And we, we also do other things, like we think they're better than they actually are. Um, we trust that algorithms aren't biased and that they're neutral, whereas we've heard today many times over that they are actually not. Also, you know, Madeline Ellish and Tim Wang have done work showing that we we trust uh, these systems, and, and if there's a human in the loop and a mistake happens, we will assign more blame to the human than to the system. And we're also starting to see companies effectively distance themselves just a little bit from responsibility for certain outcomes by saying, oh, you know, the algorithm did it. So we're still trying to recognize and understand all of the irrational ways that people over-rely on these systems and trust them too much or trust them too little and why. Um, but the main point I want to make here is that the flawed ways that we think about and project onto AI can actually affect governance. So people like Ryan Kahlo or Neil Richards and Bill Smart have all made the case that the ways that judges, for example, in the legal system understand and view robotic technology, for example, comparing robots to humans, has a real impact on court decisions and on lawmaking and leads to some very problematic outcomes that are hypocritical and don't make any sense. So it may be important to try to understand the irrational ways in which people view and treat algorithmic decision making and the impact of that on the public discourse. So we need to recognize, for example, that we are biased towards anthropomorphizing these systems in our perception, in our language, and we need to be vigilant about these biases, and we need to try to focus the public attention on questions that matter. 
And we also need to be transparent about the actual capabilities of the technology and translate this knowledge for the general public and for policymakers. And so I'm, I'm just really thankful to be here today in a room full of people who aren't only doing great and really interesting and important work, but who are also intellectually honest and really care about getting the now and the future of artificial intelligence right. Thank you. Amen, Kate.